Hey everybody, this is Paul with Michael Classics, and today I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about swapping out this Buster 9 revision with the Buster 11 revision on this Amiga 4000. Uh, hopefully I won't be in the way too much here for it. I've tried to get the angle as good as possible, and this is going to be sort of a top-down view. And uh, we'll do it started. So the way I have this set up, is currently I have the board over a preheater set to 200 degrees Celsius and uh, you'll see my hot air system to take it off I'm gonna walk through a little bit about what I'm doing maybe a little bit quiet and not as much talking for me but just some simple de demonstrations and and I'll I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing as I go as well so getting started the most important thing you want to do is flux the board up you don't, you don't want to do this dry. The flux does help reduce the surface tension of the solder. And I put quite a bit on, is I'll clean it up afterwards. I mean, this stuff is relatively cheap, so you might as well use it. So I'm just gonna go completely around this board. And again, I'll clean it up afterwards. So no worries about making too much of a mess on it. And the flux that I use, in case anybody wonders, is I use Amtec flux. Um, you don't want to buy this stuff from eBay. You, you want to get it from a good, reputable source. Uh, the Rosman Group store online, uh, if anybody knows him, he sells a good amount of it. But uh, this is what it is, Amtec NC559. It's a tacky flux. It works really well. Um, it does magic when you're done. Okay, so board's heated up, flux is on. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hot air gun. And I'm going to set it to right around 260-265 and again you want to do this quick. The reason that you use a preheater is so you have minimum amount of time of this higher heat. We'll go ahead and set it for 270. Then I have my air pressure up a little bit high. I like to take a pair of just regular old tweezers here, nothing too fancy, and I use those just as like a little bit of a weight. So I'll set them down off to the side here like that. And again, you're going to want to start off just a little bit high, get it going, just heat it up some. And then you just wait. You might hear my fan kick in. It's my to remove some of the flux fumes as it once it starts. Sorry if it's a little bit loud. Turn the volume. Turn the pressure down a little bit of it. Go against all the sides. The thing is here is not to force this. Let the flux do the work, let the heat do the work, and it will come off. It may take it may take a minute or two.
Yeah, and it's off, and it's hot, so get rid of it, it's to quick. Then I just like to make sure that the pads look good. I'll take the hot air gun, go over the pads, just to melt the solder beads down. And since you got the flux on there, you might as well. And there you go. It's off. As easy as that. Look, you can still see some of that flux burning off, pulling the fumes out. And you want to shut off your preheater and let the board come down to temperature on its own. You don't want to cool too much. It keep you from shocking the board. Just, just give it a chance to cool down. And that's basically it. That's how you take off a service mount chip. You don't want to rush it. Don't force it. The preheater is really part of the secret. It allows you to keep the heat on as, as minimal time as possible. And it doesn't require it to go quite as far. Uh, so I, I only had to go up 76 degrees from where the board was sitting at. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped out. And we'll come back a little bit later as I put it on and we'll show the process of reinstalling it. And this is Paul with Acro Classics. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe, and if you want to see any more videos like this, please just comment down below and let me know what kind of things you'd like to see. All right, and we are back once again. This time, I am going to remove the old solder off the pads and get them ready to go to be cleaned and also to put the new buster on. So you don't want the old solder on the pads because the, button, the new chip won't lay flat. I am not going to socket this chip. I don't really like to use sockets because they cause more trouble than they're worth. So in this case, what we're going to do is use some desolder braid here. And we're going to take the old solder off carefully. Now, you don't want to use this over and over and over again. You don't want to press hard. You want to just enough to get the old solder wick off, the old solder I mean off. I'm using a nice flat tip here. So what you're going to do is you just take the solder blade and put it on and it will do the job for you. And you want to carefully remove the solder. You don't want to push too hard so the last thing you want to do is have one of these pads come up on you and it's a pain in the butt to fix these things. So we're just going to go ahead and take it off little by little here. Be careful not to ruin the pads. And then you want, this stuff is cheap so use it and get rid of it once it starts to get saturated with old solder. cleaner that you can get it, the better that it will be, and the easier it will be to solder on the new chip. Again, I'm just going over this quickly. Now you'll see, now you see why I chose to get the solder down at the beginning there with the heat gun, so it made it a whole lot easier to get this old solder off. And there you go. It's good enough. It's off. It's nice, level. And the board will be happy when I put the new chip on. So the next step that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. You may have noticed that I took the memory chip the sockets out as well on here. Up here towards the top, you can see they have been removed. I'm going to be putting new ones in. The customer for this wanted fresh metal clipped memory sockets and he wanted all five in so we're going to put all five in. Normally I only put three in. 
um, just just because. And you know, while, while we're at it, I'll go ahead and, and show you show you that. So technically, you only need three memory sockets on here: two for fast, one for chip. And the reason that is is you can put eight double-sided eight megabyte SIM sockets or SIM modules in. So what you would do in, in this case, you would put the new sockets on, so one there for, for your chip, then you would skip, put the next one in, then you would skip again and put the next one in. So if you did them this way, you know, obviously you're gonna want them facing really. But if you did them this way and put it in, it allows you to put those double-sided in here and eight megabytes piece so your 16 megs plus your two megabyte and you can technically put a double eight sided megabyte in the top as well it'll only show two but it'll work and that's what you would do there but in this case i'm putting all five of them in put the battery back in but this thing is going to get all the rest of the socket chips taken out and it's going to go into the ultrasonic clean to be cleaned up and ready to go for the new parts going on it and when we're ready for that I will bring it back and show you. Okay, so here we are back once again. I decided instead of cleaning this in the ultrasonic tank and showing you that I would try and just put the buster chip on and then clean everything. So easy enough. I apologize for the noise in the background. The neighbors are getting their carpets cleaned or something. So there's a big truck out there with a vacuum pump running. So first thing we want to do is I'm going to clean this with some isopropyl alcohol. Even though it's going to get more flux put on it, I like to make sure that there's no junk on these pads, make sure that they're nice and shiny and no issues on them, like no breaks or anything like that. Like I said, we just did some major surgery on this thing, so it's probably for the best. So it's looking pretty good. And you'll notice it's pretty pretty nasty. So we're cleaning that off. More than likely this board was owned by a smoker before. So we get some gross stuff off of here. You definitely don't want that in your solder. Clean that off. alcohol off of there. And again, this is going in an ultrasonic cleaner when we're done. So I'm not too concerned with making it perfect before. We at least want it ready for new solder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick two corners. So I like this corner here and this corner here. And I'm gonna tack this down. So I am gonna put a little bit of flux down on it. Just a small bead of it. And this will help keep the new buster in place. And it is also gonna help us to get the solder to flow where we want it to go. And it doesn't need to be a huge amount here, but enough to cover all these pads and to stick the new chip into place. Thing I'm going to do is I am going to make sure I orientate the chip properly 
and if you look on here you can see a small dot that is your pin one and on the board there is a one written so the chip will sit this direction and we're good so I'm going to line this up as best I can and we are going to tack down one of the ends and we're going to go back and look at it again and make sure that it's good again this is the most important part you want to make sure that it's perfectly straight Again, this flux makes it nice and easy to put everything in. Hopefully my mirror doesn't get into the way here, but if it does, I apologize. You can see my big fat head here too. Okay, that looks good. So the next step that we're going to do, like I say, is I am going to tack it into place from one side to hold it down. And then we'll do the other. Again, and using this nice tacky flux really helps make the job easy. I'm also using a micro soldering pencil for this. Uh, some people prefer to drag solder, some people prefer pin to pin. Um, if I'm just doing a single chip like this, I prefer to do a pin to pin. And this is a Hakko FM 2032. It's really small, as you can notice. It really helps to get the pins like, perfectly in place without creating too many bridges. So hopefully we can get this where you can see and I'm not going to be in your way here. is one pin down and what we're going to do is the opposite corner I'm going to do it as a well so I will flip the board around make sure that you all can still see this and I will make sure that we haven't shifted too much and that we are still lined up like we indeed are. Do the opposite corner now. Again, some people you can, there's several techniques you can use to do this. Some people like to pre tin their iron a tiny bit like this. That way you can get in, excuse, excuse my hand, but you can get in here and push down on it nice and tight. Get in there and just get that single pin. So now we are locked in, we're not going anywhere, and once I do the two corners, I like to actually rotate it once again, and this time I will do the opposite two sides completely. Why I do that is it just, it just helps to keep those other pins from getting loose, and it also helps ensure that all my sides are, are well enough to uh, be able to solder. And now I like to just take it and come right in here and just pin to pin and it goes fairly quickly.
helps out with this is the flux. difficult to demonstrate soldering so I'm only gonna do one side and show you guys I'm gonna finish and then we'll come back when it's done so you can see how it looks I'm gonna just quickly put some solder on here then I'll go back and I will flow it better so that it makes contact all the way down with the pins is it. Okay, so we are back with the handheld this time. And the buster is now soldered in place. I've got all four sides soldered in. And what we're going to do now is just go ahead and take a quick look at it and make sure that we don't have any solder bridges or anything. I use a loop ahead of time, so I know we're, we're good and I know all the joints are good. But just to zoom in a little bit, just to give you an idea of what it is we're looking for. Here is one of the sides, so you go through and you can see that they are all in there. Another good example is I did clean this with alcohol after I was done, and if you look closely, you can see the shine underneath the chip of all the flux that is still in there. You really do not want to leave that in there. So that's where the ultrasonic cleaning so, uh, tank is going to come in when we're done here, and I'll show you that. But you can go through all four sides and you get a good idea of everything is tacked into place nicely. The chip is nice and centered. Pin one is where pin one should be. And the next step is ultrasonic cleaning. And we'll get back into there as soon as we can. And I'll come back and I'll show you the final results from that. And then the next thing we'll do is put the chip, chip sockets back in for memory. And this board will be ready to go. Okay, so the next step, as I mentioned, was going to be ultrasonic cleaning. And this is my ultrasonic cleaner. It's a 30 liter tank. And what we're going to do here is just take the lid off of this and you can see on inside here. So what's inside here is we have Bramson EC. So Bramson EC is a concentrated formula. It's approximately a hundred milliliters of solution with, yeah, you Euro, Euro guys are going to get mad. It's 103 milliliters of, of the Branson with one gallon of water. Uh, distilled water very important so what we do here this this is just gonna go straight down inside so believe it or not you take the board and you're just gonna drop it in the water if you notice I took all of the socketed chips off so that goes down inside I'm gonna turn it on it's quite loud so as soon as this kicks in I'm going to shut it off because you won't hear me it'll mess with the microphone so bad that you can't you can't hear it so we just go down here. I have this set for about 10 minutes, as you can see down here. And what I'll do is I'll kick it on and we'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, we are back once again and it is out. 
Now this is also set to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's quite hot. And you want that heat because it actually helps quite a bit with the reaction that the Bramson does in order to get clean. So you reach in and take it out. And you will notice that it is quite clean once it comes out of this thing. So we'll I'll film as much as I can of it just to give you guys an, an idea. But I like to shake it off as much as I can, get as much of the liquid off. Again, this was distilled water, so some people have heard of the dishwasher method. As this is kind of similar to that, I suppose. Um, what the ultrasonic does is it causes some massive cavitations inside here at like 44,000 hertz. It's, it's pretty crazy. And it literally just scrubs everything off. But you'll notice how amazingly clean this thing is now. Um, all the flux that was on that buster is definitely gone. It's nice, shiny, clean. So what we're going to do next is, obviously we don't want to start this thing up with water in it. So I take it over to this pan here. And I let it sit in this pan and I give it an alcohol bath. So what I'm going to do next is spray it down with alcohol, let it dry. And I usually let it sit on a vent sideways for a day or two make sure all of it is completely dried out and then I will finish it off but in this case I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on the memory sockets and everything and get everything all taken care of clean those up again and then I will let it dry out so we will be back again shortly and once this is dry and I will show you where that's at And welcome back again. Here we are at the final stage of this board. So the only thing left now is to put all the chips back in and to, you know, obviously test it. I'm going to let it sit for a little longer before I power it up, just, just because I, don't, I want to make absolute certain that there is no moisture left in this board. But, you know, I do that every, every time I take care of a board. You can see that I have new memory sockets back on now. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer. And you can see just how clean the motherboard gets when you run it through an ultrasonic cleaner. You know, there's no corrosion left on any of the pins. There's all the solder is nice and shiny. All the chips are gone. There's no flux at all on the board anymore. And it just, it looks like a brand new board again, the way that it should be done. And this is the way that if you're going to do a recap, if you're going to clean a board up, if you're going to replace any chips, this is the way that you really need to get a board done and finished. Otherwise, all that junk it just stays on the board and just continues to rot the board away. So all the work that you've done to it is just kind of going to waste. So hopefully this educated a little bit of you guys and took you through a nice journey of seeing how I do some stuff. It also explains a little bit about why I take so long to get things back to some people every now and then. Because, you know, I do it right. I don't charge a lot because I enjoy doing it, but I still want the job done properly. And hopefully you continue to ask me to help you guys out. I look forward to doing it and I enjoy doing it. And this is another 4,000 that should live for quite a while longer with good capacitors, good chips, proper memory sockets, and clean thoroughly inside and out. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and again, I hope you subscribe. You know, the tell people about me, and hopefully we can get more boards together and keep our beloved platform lasting several more years to come.